ROI, return on investment, or in simple terms, will I make any money from my short term rental property? Well, the simple answer is yes. Uh, no. Well, maybe. One of the most common questions that we get asked every time someone reaches out to us about purchasing a vacation home here in the Orlando area is, will my property make money? I'm going to make money, I'm going to lose money, am I going to break even? And uh, the honest answer is, I don't know. Uh, and the reason for that is, is there are a lot of factors that go into determining whether you're successful in terms of revenue and your ROI on the vacation home. And in this video, we're going to go through some of those factors. We're going to look at how those affect the numbers. And we're going to give you a really good idea of what you're looking for and what you need to do to make the calculations that are necessary. So you can understand if a short-term rental property is going to make you money, it's going to break you even, or it's going to lose money. So we are going to start off by going over some of the very basics so that uh, we understand exactly where we are on a baseline. And then we're going to dig into the numbers and we're going to show you a few examples and give you some ideas of what a property that you're looking at may be in terms of your return on investment. So the first thing that we really need to talk about uh, before we dive into all the numbers and all the good and all the complicated stuff is exactly what short-term rental is. Short-term rental was really set up originally uh, as a way for people who owned a vacation home here in the central Florida area around about Orlando and Disney, a way to be able to rent that property out when they were not using it themselves so they could generate some of the monies to help cover the cost of ownership. So those were luxury purchases, lifestyle investments, as we like to say, people who just wanted a vacation home here in Florida, wanted to enjoy it with their family and their friends, and then hopefully recover some of the costs of ownership by renting it out to other families who we wanted to do the same. And that is really the philosophy of the short-term rental program, carried on that way until the late 90s, early 2000s, when there was a boom on the online service uh, popping up like VRBO and Airbnb and all of those online marketing companies came into effect uh, and all of a sudden uh, folks had the opportunity to actually generate reasonably good revenue and in some cases uh, cover their costs and for a few actually make money on their vacation home. So the thought process and the theory behind short-term rental is not really to generate income in terms of making money. It's not meant to be a money-making uh, entity but it actually has come and in some cases if you get the right property in the right place uh, you can generate sufficient income to cover your costs and in some cases you may be able to generate some money. So let's look at the various things that contribute to those numbers. So first and most important is the location. First off is the location where you purchase. Uh, you are going to do best as far as generating income when you're in the bigger, better the resorts, the newer resorts. Why is that? Because those resorts have the facilities, they have the great infrastructure, they have the lazy rivers, the clubhouses, the gate, uh, guarded gated security, the restaurants, all the things that people are looking for in a self-contained resort. What we've found actually over the last 10 years is a graph where more and more people are staying in vacation homes and less and less people are staying in hotels as more people find out the value of a vacation home. So you can get a whole home to yourself uh, for you and your family with all those great games rooms and all those great facilities with its own pool. Uh, and you don't have to pay um, $100 every morning for breakfast that you would in a hotel room. Uh, so more and more people statistically are moving over to vacation homes. The vacation home market is expanding. The hotel market is not going to go away, uh, but certainly uh, vacation homes are becoming the predominant way for people vacationing here in the Orlando area. And that gives uh, owners of vacation homes a great opportunity to generate revenue, in many cases cover the cost of the property, and in some cases make some money. So the location is really important. The most important fact in all of the equations you're going to do in terms of running the numbers on a vacation home is the nightly rate. And the nightly rate times the occupancy is going to equal your gross. Gross minus, of course, the cost of running is going to be your net. And we're going to actually look at some examples uh, in this video. Where we're going to take some properties. We're going to run some numbers on them, do some 
general numbers and we'll see how those properties run out. Now you've got a great idea, one, of how the numbers work and two, a way for you to be able to do it yourself so you don't have to rely on anybody telling you you're going to you know, become an overnight millionaire with your vacation home and of course you, know, you buy in and it doesn't work out that way. That's not going to happen to you because we're going to make sure that you can run your own numbers and then you can be very comfortable with how your ROI will work out. So the first thing you're going to need is an interactive short term rental calculator. You can go to jerrybarker.com and go to the tool drop down menu and click on calculate the returns if you want to use hours and you will come to our interactive calculator and this has everything on it you will require to do short term rental property. For this example today, we're going to play around with a property. I had a look on the MLS this morning and found a really nice $700,000 listed six bedroom home in Champions Gate Resort, which we're going to use as an example. A great median property uh, and it's very easy to run the numbers on that one. So it gives you an idea on that particular overview. And we're going to start off with putting in the $700,000 in the purchase price. Down payment is going to be 100% because we're going to work it out with cash. And then we'll flip it over and we'll put a mortgage in later and we'll see how that changes the numbers. Closing costs, uh, I've put it in there at half a percent, which is $3,500. That is a very subjective number because closing costs can mean so many different things. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of the closing costs are prorations. In other words, it's monies that... For example, the seller has already paid that you're going to pay back for. For example, if they paid the homeowners association fees right up until the end of August and you're buying in June, then you will prorate those monies back. So a lot of them are prorations. Conversely, uh, if uh, you are buying the property, um, let's call it in July, uh, and the owner's already owned it for uh, six months of the year, then the owner actually owes you six months worth of taxes. So if it's $5,000 in the taxes, then they would credit you the $2,500 at closing. In fact, I've actually had situations where with people closing at the end of the year, they've actually been a positive uh, on their closing costs as opposed to a negative, just depending on the proration. So, but we'll put this in at 0.5%, put it in at 3,500 for a cash purchase. That should be fine right now. We'll cover us for that. Furniture package. This is really, this field really is in here for people who are buying a brand new vacation home and they're going to want to furnish that property uh, for rental. And you can use that there in there. It just gives you your total investment number and no mortgage in this uh, particular example. So the uh, total initial investment is $703,500. So let's move down to the outgoing set. And these are your monthlies. And we don't have a house payment because we are paying cash in, at the beginning of this example. Taxes for this particular property is uh, $7,781 for the year. Where do we get that number? We get that number directly from the listing. So when you're looking at a property and you see the listing, you'll see that number there. So you can just pull that directly right in. Property insurance, again, a little bit subjective. I've got that down uh, for $2,200 a year. It can be a little more, it could be a little less. So we'll put it down at 2200 I think that's a fair number. Homeowner Association fees, Homeowners Association, uh, which everybody pays uh, towards the property and includes the clubhouse, uh, the facilities, the guarded, the gated security, the landscaping, all of the things that make that resort uh, really beautiful. And, and at the end of the day, it's the reason why people want to come and stay and pay you a little extra because of the facilities in the resort. Champions Gate, where this particular property is located, is uh, particularly beautiful and has a, probably the best of the clubhouses. So you do get really good at value for money in your homeowners association fees. Again, where do we find that number? We find that number on the listing. You'll see it there at $451 a month for Champions Gate, the retreat. So you can put that right in there. Utilities. Again, uh, subjective to use, uh, utilities are going to be higher. That's your, your, uh, your electric, your water, your gas, if you have gas. Uh, and again, if uh, the property is being used a lot, that number is going to go up a little bit. And if it's not going to get used so much, then the number is going to come down a little bit. But I think really for this, I think we're being pretty conservative, put in at $400 a month. That should cover uh, the utilities in most cases. I'll put that in at $4,800 a year. Yard maintenance, one of the nice things about the big major resorts 
is that uh, the yard maintenance generally comes as part of this homeowners association uh, fee. So it's about 100 to 120 dollars a month probably in yard maintenance. Uh, and the other thing about homeowners association in Champions Gate, for example, it also includes your cable uh, and your internet. Uh, so you have that uh, as a benefit there as well. So really, as much as the homeowners association fees are 451 dollars, the actual cost is a lot less than that because you're saving on the yard, you're saving on the internet, you're saving uh, on your cable TV. So it's actually really good value on the homeowners association fees. Pool costs, you're going to have to have your pool cleaned and the chemicals done. Uh, on a weekly basis, uh, and that will run you anywhere between ninety and one hundred and twenty-five dollars there or thereabouts to have your pool cleaned every month. Some uh, pool fees are included with the property management fee. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But we're just going to go with independent pool cleaner right now, and we're going to put in one hundred and twenty, which results in one thousand four hundred and forty dollars on your annual fee on your pool. Uh, so for the total uh, running costs for your uh, beautiful six bedroom home there in Champions Gate is going to be $21,633. So if you did not rent it at all, then you would be on the hook for $21,633 for your annual running cost. Not too bad at all to have a beautiful house like that and a great resort. So that's a good start as we look at the numbers. Moving down, we'll now look at the outgoing and incoming for the management side and the rental part of the business. Property management company. Property management companies have uh, two things that they do. They manage the property, uh, and that is in looking after it, maintaining it, checking people in, checking people out. If there's any issues, they're there uh, to resolve those issues for you. Most of them also do your uh, monthly filings for your county tax, and uh, they charge you a fee. Fees for property management companies uh, vary, again, depending on the management company, what's included, if you include the pool, etc etc and they can run anywhere from $150 to $350 just depending on the management company and what they provide so we're going to put that down as 200 because I think that's a pretty fair amount uh, to let us carry on so $2,400 a year on the cost for the management rental commissions and probably one of the more important one of the questions we've got asked a lot what are the rental commissions for the property management company those also vary depending on the management company they can be anywhere from as low as 10% uh, anywhere up to about 25%, uh, just depending on the management company and what they provide. Uh, one little tip is that uh, just because the, the rental commissions are lower doesn't mean to say you're going to make more money. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make. There's a reason why management companies uh, uh, rent out for less, and it's usually not a good reason. So if you get a 10% uh, as opposed to a 20%, then just uh, think of it in terms of uh, 80% of something is a lot better than 90% of nothing. And that may well be the case. So uh, we have a saying, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. And in many cases, property management companies can be very much a case of that. So be very careful with your management company, especially if they're lower end. There are some who are lower and they actually do a good job. Uh, but make sure that you get a very reputable management company and you only get what you pay for. We're going to go with 15% because that tends to be the common number, so we'll put that down there just now. Uh, and we can also change that. That's the great thing about the interactive rental calculator is you get to change all those numbers and look and see what that does, does to your return. And that number is going to be dependent on the next section, which is income figures. So income figures is probably the part that most people struggle with. How many weeks will my property rent and uh, what is the nightly rate? So let's uh, delve into that a little bit. Uh, for this particular example, I have set the weeks rented at 26. That's 50%. So 50% occupancy is 26 weeks a year. Uh, and that's very achievable. So we'll put that in there as such. The nightly rate, and this is probably the number one thing that people struggle with, and there's a reason for that because the nightly rate can vary dramatically depending on a lot of things from house to house, uh, and that is really depending on you as an owner and what you're prepared to do with the house in terms of marketing it, making it beautiful and doing all that stuff, and that is the difference maker when it comes to your ROI, and we can jump into that a little bit different. I also have another great video that explains the things that owners can do to really improve their nightly rate. But for right now, the, how I got this rate, $331, well, I jumped over to VRBO and I just typed in a six bedroom in Champions Gate and I pulled it up and it was the first one that came up on the list. 
Uh, it looked like a really nice property, very similar to the one that was being sold. Uh, so their nightly rate was $331. I had a quick scroll through the pages. There were some that were higher. There were a few that were lower. Uh, and I thought 331 that's a pretty good place to start. I think that's okay. It certainly can be uh, greatly improved on. But yes, again, for this example, let's just be a little conservative. Let's go through the process and see what the numbers provide. And we'll take it from there. So at a nightly rate of $331 and at 26 uh, uh, weeks a year at 50% rental, you pull in a gross of $60,242. Personal use savings. Personal use savings, one of the most important things about vacation homes that people get out of them is they get to use them themselves. And I have had a lot of clients over the years say to me, hey, you know, I'm saving that money. Uh, I don't have to spend that when I come and use the property. I'm there a couple of times a year. My family get to use the property and I don't have to pay that to someone else. So um, because of that, I thought I'd put a box in there. You can fill it out if you want or not. But a lot of people take that as a big plus of owning a vacation home as the savings that they will save, not only it's their own place with their own flip-flops, their own locker, all the great stuff that comes of owning a place that you know it's going to be there and it, it suits you and your family perfectly. You also get to save the money that you'd be spending elsewhere. So put that in, you can put that in, you can take it out. Again, you can mess around with it as you like, but that's why that is there. So your total running costs uh, for this property for the year is 33000 and $69 and those big 30 cents. Don't forget about those 30 cents. So that gives you an estimated annual cost in return of 32,172 and 70 cents. So uh, if everything runs as you see that right now, then um, that's what you would expect to pull in for your investment of $700,000. That would be your annual returns on this particular property. So let's go back now and scroll back up and now we're going to take a mortgage out and we're going to see how that changes things for our property and let's pop in and we'll change, let's put down 20%. We're not going to put down 200%, we're going to put down 20%, uh, which is $140,000. Closing costs, again, it's going to be really dependent on the lender and the lender's fees. Uh, they can be changed quite dramatic depending on you and your credit history and who you're using. Uh, etc etc but of course there are going to be additional closing costs uh, for uh, a mortgage and uh, we're not going to deal with that today because that's really a financing issue it's not really a, a return on investment in the short term uh, annual returns but um, just for a point of reference you can probably expect to pay um, between uh, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars on top of that. So what does that work itself out to be if we went in there and put in two and a half percent? Yeah, that's probably a lot closer. It may even be a little bit more than that, depending on the, the mortgage company. But we'll leave that in there for the time being, and just give us a point of reference. Furniture package, mortgage amount, uh, and then your total investment drops to one hundred fifty-seven thousand at five hundred dollars. So that's that's what you're investing into your property on the mortgage. So let's scroll down and see what that does to all the rest of the numbers, the outgoings. Of course, um, mortgage rate is going to change. I've put it in here at 7%. At some time can be more or less, depends on who you are and who you use. But let's use that number right now, which adds uh, $3,725.69 on to your monthlies. Everything else remains the same all the way down, but your outgoing costs now are $66,341. So yes, if you bought this property in a mortgage, um, it's, you're going to be into it for $66,341 a year if you do not rent it out. So let's slide on down into the rental figures. Um, we'll take a look and see what that does to our ROI. And as you can see, if we do nothing else, uh, then if you ran this on this vanilla numbers, then it's going to cost you uh, $12,535 uh, a year uh, to own this property and rent it out, which is actually not too bad when you consider it's going to cost you $12,000 a year, but somebody else is paying all the costs and all the mortgage. That's actually not a particularly bad number. But again, if you're looking for cash flow, that's obviously not going to work for you. The benefits of the ownership part really have to come into that lifestyle purchase. But let's play around with the numbers a little bit and see what happens when we tweak them a little bit and perhaps make them a little bit more uh, friendly for uh, a better uh, rental occupancy and rate. Uh, for example, 26, again, 50% is very low. Most of our clients uh, are, are easily in the low 30s, the mid, and even in some cases, those people 
that know uh, how to market uh, and do their own thing can get it away into the 30s. But let's just do let's just do 34 just for talking sex. So we got up to 34 weeks rented. As you can see now, we're broken even, just at uh, uh, 34 weeks a year of rental, which is uh, which is great. So now we know what our median is. We can go up to 34 weeks. How do we get up to 34 weeks? Uh, obviously, the marketing part of that is probably the most important. Uh, owner bookings, uh, I would say, is the number one thing that contributes to the uh, occupancy. If you're an owner who has a good social uh, following, uh, or if uh, your kids, school, marketing, you can put it out there to people. Uh, everybody is looking for a place, and uh, anyone with kids is looking to go to Disney. So if you've got kids, uh, and you can do a little bit of self-marketing into the school or wherever the case may be. You know, the Smiths have got a beautiful vacation home in Orlando. Let us know. We'll give you a friends and family rate or whatever the case may be. You can easily get another four or five or six weeks rental uh, just from that alone by pushing that through. Uh, those generally will be commission-free as well, so you'll actually make more money on them. And for the most part, when it's friends and family or people you know, they tend to look after the house a little bit better. So those owners who can do even a little bit, you don't have to do much. Just let people know you have it and push it out and around about there. You'll find you'll get those extra bookings. That is probably the simplest way to start these numbers going up. And um, the clients are able to do that. I can see getting into the late 30s. And I've even had a, uh, an owner who got it into 40 weeks uh, at one point. So that makes all the difference right there. That times your nightly rate, obviously, is your gross. How do we get the nightly rate up? Well, we make the property more attractive for people to use. What does that mean? That means making the house, uh, doing the things, themed rooms, uh, adding facilities, theatres, games rooms, just making the house great, marketing it great, doing great photos and videos. A lot of people don't think, but yeah, if you can get very creative with your photos and your videos, so it really looks great, because at the end of the day, uh, when someone is looking to rent a vacation home here in Orlando, they look at photographs. So that's the number one thing that they, they look at. You've done it, I've done it, we've all done it. And uh, depending on the photographs, I like the look of this one, I don't like the look of that one. The kids fell in love with the Star Wars room, or whatever the case may be. You can push your nightly rate up because it's a more attractive property. So doing the things you need to do as an owner in terms of renting and also making the property great, uh, can really enhance your nightly rate. And so let's just for uh, for fun, let's push this up just a little bit. Let's do it from 331. Let's see if we can get that up to three, maybe we can get up to 380 a night. Let's see what happens when we do that. We push that up to 380 a night. And then you can see how your uh, rate has jumped up to 13,000. So not only with this property, if you can maximize your uh, rate and you can maximize your occupancy, uh, you can push this property into the positive cash flow, even with uh, a pretty high mortgage. So there are ways to do it. There are ways uh, to be creative and get those numbers up. But we generally find that most people are in that, quite happy to get that uh, 26 to 28 weeks a year uh, at a decent return. They'll get the number up a little bit there. And uh, 350 is probably a really nice median. Uh, and there you go, there's your break even. So you can buy your vacation home here in Orlando. You can get the use of it whenever you want for your friends and family. And it'll cost you a few thousand dollars a year to have someone else pay for your mortgage and pay for all the costs. That's a pretty good deal. And for most people, that's the most attractive part of purchasing a vacation home here in Central Florida. So how do we get the rate up? So the rate, Jerry, you're telling us is the most important thing. Well, people are going to pay if they get quality. It's quite simple. Nightly rates for a vacation home could be as low as you know, $80 a night for a, uh, a little condo somewhere. And there are huge 10, 15 bedroom, crazy luxury homes and the likes of Reunion Resort where it's $2,000 uh, a night to rent those places. Uh, so the, the, the scale can be anywhere from under $100 to thousands of dollars a night. So that scale is actually pretty linear as it goes up. As the properties get better, uh, you're buying in a better resort, uh, the properties are bigger, the properties are better uh, managed, the properties are better furnished, uh, have more facilities, more game rooms, bigger pool. As you uh, add more things onto your property, your rate starts to increase. So there kind of is a spot where if you look at it, 
if you are purchasing, we'll just say you're purchasing cash right now. If you're purchasing cash, cash there's kind of a point that you reach in that buying process where you get to the point where it's even. So if you spend, well, let's just take a number, for example. Uh, right now, uh, if you're buying a, a vacation home property and you're spending somewhere in the region of uh, between six and seven hundred thousand dollars on a vacation home, you're probably in that middle area right there where you can expect uh, your nightly rate to allow you to break even once you've covered all your costs of ownership and property management and insurance and taxes, etc., etc. You're probably going to break even. So if you are running a mortgage, you're obviously going to have an extra fee uh, every month. So you can add on an extra probably $100 a night or thereabouts, 100, basically another $100,000 to $200,000 there or thereabouts on the value of the property to break even if you were taking financing. So that's kind of the first step. So you want to find out where that median is. Uh, anything over that, you've got a chance uh, to uh, generate income. Anything below that, probably you're going to be a little upside down in your numbers. Interestingly enough, the vast majority of people who purchase properties from us, it's not about generating income. Most of them want the lifestyle investment of having a great home here in the Orlando area. They want to be able to use it for them, themselves, and their friends, and their family. Uh, whenever they want, they want to diversify their portfolio so they have some property in that portfolio and a vacation home is a great way to do that. So if they can get anywhere near even or even maybe just a little bit under, uh, then they're thrilled with that. Basically, the concept is, is they buy a property and someone else pays for it. That's not such a bad deal, even if you're not generating money or you may be losing a few thousand dollars a year, that actually works out to be a great win. And believe it or not, that is probably the vast majority of the clients that we work with. Uh, they are looking to purchase into that lifestyle investment. And if they can get right around that break even mark, they are absolutely delighted with that. So what about the investor buyers? Investor buyers are going to find it more difficult to get the numbers they're looking for simply because vacation homes cost a lot of money to run. There are a lot of expenses uh, that are connected with a home. If you're a homeowner, you'll know where a lot of those are already. Your home insurance, uh, you have your property taxes, you have your homeowners association fees and the maintenance costs. Uh, on top of that, uh, with a vacation home, you have management fees and commissions to pay uh, on top of those costs. So there is a lot to cover at the beginning of the year before you get any chance of making money. So you have to cover that nut before you actually get to the point where you're generating. So it is a, a particularly large amount of money. The interesting part about it and a kind of easy way to look at it is uh, most vacation homes, kind of for the most part, a lot of the costs are fixed. Uh, so you're going to pay the same amount for uh, homeowners association fees. And I use this as an example, Reunion Resort, which is a, a massive resort if you're not familiar with it. They have you know, condos that are $300,000 and they have uh, homes, 20 bedroom homes that are $20 million. Well, the, the condo, the homeowners association fees for the condo are around $450 a month uh, for the HOA fees. And if you buy one of these $20 million homes, the homeowners association fees are about $450 a month. So when you've got a lot of fixed costs, then it doesn't take a, uh, a genius to figure out uh, if you're generating more money and you've got a better nightly rate, then your return on your investment is going to be greater. So it's really simple to, again, moving into that sliding scale. As you spend more, you go up in value. And as you go up in value, your chances of generating income are better. So the first thing you really want to do is figure out where you are in that sliding scale and we can give you advice on that at any given time so you can work out where you need to be to be in the point of break even. So we've talked a lot about various different factors in terms of the property, uh, getting uh, the right location, getting a home that has all the facilities, a beautiful home that looks good, smells good and has all the entertainment value within the home. Um, getting a property management company that knows what they are doing. That is very important as well. Property management companies are not all created equal, so you need to make sure you get one that suits what you want to do. And that might be a property management company that is more interested in looking after your property, make sure it's really well kept, or perhaps one that's there for generating more income. So that's something you have to make a determination on. But the simple end of the day, 
if you came to me and said, Jerry, uh, what's the ROI in this property? The question that I would ask you is, who are you? How involved are you going to be with your vacation home? The vacation home owner is simply the number one X factor that we can't make a determination for. And that's why if someone asks, if you ask someone and they tell you right off you're going to make this amount of money or that amount of money, then it's probably not right because they don't know who you are. And the owner of a vacation home, without a shadow of a doubt, can make a massive swing in the return on the investment. And that is because owners, whether they're active owners or or passive owners, passive owners just making sure that the management company, the home, everything is done to the very best to put the money into it, to make it look good, to make it very rentable. They take great photographs, they make great videos, they'll spend a little extra to make their home pristine. They'll bring in a good management company, they don't mind spending a little extra to make it work properly for people coming to stay in, in their homes. That is exceptionally important. Uh, but you also have active owners, active owners who within their social circle, they're able to bring in additional bookings. And those are called owner bookings. And really owner bookings are probably the single most important thing uh, when it comes to generating additional income for a vacation home. What is an owner booking? How does that work? Well, quite simply, if you are able to go out there and whether it be with your friends or your family or more likely your social circle, if you uh, work in an environment with a lot of people, maybe even a school or your kids, uh, and if you can get involved in uh, the parent circle, everybody comes to Disney, everybody wants to come to Disney, they're looking for a place to stay. And if they can stay in your villa, well, you're bringing in an owner booking. And what does that mean? Well, generally, owner book bookings are going to be commission free. So you're going to save that commission. So not only are you bringing in more bookings, putting up your occupancy, you're actually uh, bringing in money that's going to be more for you. The, the net amount of that booking is going to be more. And the chances are owner bookings are going to look after the property a lot more than a random stranger. So those owners and the owners that we have uh, that do a lot of their own booking and work with their property management company to bring in additional bookings are the ones that are most successful. And those are the ones who will generally be able to break even or in many cases actually generate some income. So being an active owner is probably the single number one thing that you can do over and above making sure you have a nice home and a nice location that's well run to generate that more income. So in conclusion to our video today about return on investment, the answer uh, for you is, are you going to be an owner who's going to be able to do the things to make your property succeed? And answering that question first is going to go a long way to answering the question of if your property is likely to make money. So the answer is quite simple. Will your property generate income? Yes. Uh, no, maybe. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this show today. For everything you need to know about buying a vacation home here in Orlando, make sure you download a copy of my book, The Orlando Vacation Home Buyer's Guide. Stuff with information so you'll know absolutely everything you need to know about buying, managing and owning a vacation home here in Central Florida. For everything else, you can reach out to us either through our website at www.jerrybarker. Give us a call 407-286-8170. And we will get all the answers to you so you can make a very educated decision on whether a vacation home here in Orlando is for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for giving us a thumbs up and stay safe.